Hello, hola. My name is Dorota Lech, and I'm a curator from Poland based in the United States. Welcome to From the East, Female Filmmakers and the Iron Curtain, 1943 to 1993. Thank you to the Filmoteca Española and to the Museo Reina Sofia for inviting me to curate this program, which is deeply personal to me. I sincerely wish that I could be there with you, but as that's not possible, I will be introducing the series remotely. Dovetailing the havoc of the Second World War and the destruction of the Eastern Front following years of violent conflict, the Soviet Union methodically occupied the Baltics, Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, Poland, East Germany, and Czechoslovakia. Meanwhile, Albania and Yugoslavia pursued their own versions of state socialism, distinct from that of the Soviet bloc. In this time of upheaval and austerity, the Communist Party of the USSR promised that if its subjects were patient and obedient and loyal, they would eventually enjoy an elevated quality of life with plenty of food and clothing, free living accommodation, ample state benefits, including health care and pensions, and eventually other luxuries meant to improve civilians' day-to-day -day lives. Notably, these promises were accompanied by incessant pro propaganda campaigns, strictly enforced borders, and the stockpiling of arms. Meanwhile, the production of basic products was increasingly neglected. Drastic actions to gain freedom from the system were attempted and violently suppressed across various states. It is no revelation that life under totalitarian rule contained not only horrors, with people living in constant fear of knocks on the door in the middle of the night, dissidents banished away to gulags and work camps, and firing squad executions, but also everyday indignities, the coll collaborationist neighbors, cramped apartments, limited access to food and resources, and worst of all, the suppression of hope. Meanwhile, the system slowly corroded from the inside. The failure of scholars to predict the fall of the USSR and the end of Soviet occupation in Eastern Europe is undisputed. However, behind the Iron Curtain and throughout the Eastern Bloc, no one could foresee that the region was teetering on the verge of collapse better than the women, separated by borders but united in their struggles. State socialism was purported to ensure that women were equal in every respect, but this too was a fallacy. It is women, of course, who stood in daily food lines while holding down full-time jobs, often serving as the primary caretakers for entire families and communities. These same women lived without basic necessities such as sanitary napkins. They dreamed of escape and for better lives for their children. While survival was indeed a constant battle, the collapse of the system paralleled the monotony of daily life of those struggling to find resources. It was drawn out and at times utterly banal. Moreover, while the most dramatic images of the erosion, such as that of the crumbling wall in Berlin and the hordes of people moving from the east to the west, are easily summoned, the isolated and often trivial moments that led to the collapse do not immediately come to mind. It is no surprise that most films made during this period were directed by men, yet of course women's stories throughout these years are countless and boundless. Encompassing a kaleidoscopic range of approaches, this series proves that filmmaking has long been an expression of survival and resistance. Broken down into two parts, it charts the work of 34 female filmmakers across 15 countries, including Albania, Bulgaria, Georgia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Ukraine, and includes titles from prominent figures such as Vera Chitilova, Marta Mazaros, Evelyn Schmidt, and Vinka Zhejevskova. The first installment, Reconstructions and Reflections, takes place exclusively at the Filmoteca Española Cinedore. Its ten films recount and reimagine personal and collective stories. Whether summoning the past or speculating on the future, each is an extension of the creator's world and worldview. For instance, Wanda Jakubowska and Wanda Bartuvna's The Last Stage echoes its filmmaker's sense of alienation, while Aliko in Yeti's My 20th Century poses an alternative version of the universe. Shot on location in the concentration camp where Yakubovska had been interned, the last stage from 1948 looks to the then recent past. Based on the real life of Mala Zimitbaum, the film follows Marta, a multilingual Polish Jew who catches the attention of the guards in Auschwitz and is forced to work as a translator. As witnesses, real life witnesses to the brutality of the Third Reich, the filmmakers are uniquely positioned to preserve its horrors in this heart-wrenching drama of pathos and symbolism. Truly, this film is unmissable. In contrast, Il Dico and Yeti's 1989 opus, My 20th Century, often considered the first female science fiction film, looks to the future. Concerned with both universal concepts and material dilemmas and cutting across space and time, the film centers on the twin origins of modernity and cinema, both born of electricity. 
the children of destitute single mother, infants Dora and Lily, enter a world that is impoverished yet theatrically idealized. Scoffing at human arrogance, the film observes a dog undergoing a Pavlovian experiment, serving as a pointed reminder that our 20th century was undoubtedly one of paradoxes. And we, like the dog connected to electrodes, know little of our universe beyond our own laboratory. The second installment, divided into two sections, takes place exclusively at the Museo Reina Sofia. In the first section, Home and Everyday Realities, the often brutal materiality of life under occupation is explored in both private and public domains. In the second, Dreams and Imaginations, two short film showcases, uh, consider the creative possibilities of escape. Additionally, Maya Darren Specials of the Afternoon from 1943 and Chantal Ackerman's From the East from 1993, two works by Jewish female artists of Eastern European descent in different states of exile are placed in conversation, drawing attention to the paucity of Jewish storytelling on screen during this period from this region. In summary, the series provides a constellation of films depicting life across states, regions, time periods, and classes, but it's also very important to note that while the works in the series are rich and revelatory, they comprise but a fraction of the stories from this period. Consequently, this program does not purport to speak to the entirety of women's experiences during these years. The individual tales of loss, victory, triumph, and horror heard around family tables, at dashes, on land plots, or waiting in market lines also deserve telling. And the pres pres preservation of these artifacts of our mutual history is integral to reprogramming the hierarchy of images, which traditionally abandons oppressed perspectives. The surviving tales are merely ripples of our own survival, and I hope you enjoy them. Thank you so much for joining us. Ciao.